my name is Rapsy, and welcome back to Slay the Spire here in the modded series. All right, silent. Let's see some of your new cards, some of your new relics, those kinds of things. Choose a red card to obtain for a curse is rough, though. Enemies in your next three combats have one HP. I mean, we are on Ascension 1, so the possibility of sniping some elites with that is uh, non-zero. Yeah, it could snipe me one early elite. I'll take that. Plus, it's something that I can sell at a store when it's entirely used up. Take a steroid potion, as well as blade dance, maybe. Uh, I do want shivs. Yeah, let's get some shivs. Damn it, this had to be a combat. Ugh, that sucks. All right. Cloak and dagger, two shiv cards already picked up, and we've got a shop upcoming later. There goes uh, Nyao's Lament already, though. Terra, hell yes. We just passed the card Corrode, which is remove all artifacting from an enemy as well as apply three poison. Um, for one energy. I think it's uncommon as well. Uh, we have seen it before in this series, but not in a silent episode. All right, we'll upgrade to random cards. Eh, no That's fair enough. <laughs> Snack pack. Membership card. Each of these would be pretty wild. Affected by block modifiers on the trick stab. That's interesting. Um, probably just going to go for the card removal, though. Get a defensive card out of there. Shift the deck a little more aggressive. Oh, yeah. That's going to be important here. All right, unfortunately, we stu still probably do want to cast Terra. Do we want to cast Blade Darts? Okay, definitely Cloak and Dagger Shib and then kill next turn. Surprisingly little HP to lose against an Elite. Could have been a lot worse. We've got Reverence there as well. Right click. During combat to activate usable once per turn. Play an attack card from your hand at no cost and exhaust it. So, we should probably put some very high cost attack cards in our deck. Thinking. Fight for a special relic here. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Special relic is just three different relics. Really good. I'm actually going to double defend this turn. Next turn, I'm looking for a bunch of attacks with the Blade Dance. Okay, we'll also draw. Nice. Mm. Actually, we have Lethal. We right-click Reverence and then play the Strike. Hell yeah. Uh, Monkey's Toy Box. Upon pickup, obtain three common relics. We get Vajra, start each combat with one strength, as well as the bag preparation at the start of each combat. Gain two additional cards, as well as Anchor, start each combat with ten block. That's pretty ridiculous. Hell yeah. And Vajra was one of the cards we needed to get. Hell yeah. That was awesome. All right. We need Blade Dance and Cloak Dagger upgraded. Dreamcatcher, whenever you rescue me, add a card to your deck, sure. Um, light bulb. If you have any unspent energy at the end of your turn, draw that many cards at the start of your next turn. Has turned out to be a really good relic for us, like a lot of the time. I kind of want to take the for sale and then sell the monkey's toy box as well as the meow's lament because both of those are already like used. So we get 51, 52. Okay, so we didn't get enough back to pay for the Merchant's Rug. But now we have the Merchant's Rug for the rest of the run. Uh, try saying that 10 times fast. I'm actually going to take the Pen Nib here. Every 10th attack you play deals double damage. Seems pretty good. Upgrade or remove a strike? I'm thinking remove. I was going to remove one in that previous shop if I didn't go for the other option instead. Uh, Yeah, I still kind of want to wake him up this turn just because we have the shivs in hand. I'll play one of you. 
reverence there. Actually managed to full defend ourselves as well, and I'll play the other with reverence. Oh, hell yeah. We might actually, never mind. Oh no, wait, we can, of course, because we just defend this turn and then kill over the next two turns. Yeah, we're going to kill the Log of Volan in time. Hell yeah. That's pretty wild. Perfecting the Log of Volan there. Got a random relic for it as well. Basket of Snakes. Every fifth attack you play deals two necrotic poison each time it deals unblocked attack damage. We've dealt with that recently. I'm probably not going to use it much over the course of this. I'll take Adrenaline, draw two cards as well as an extra energy. And then I'm going to gain my Log of Volan relic. We got Old Nail, Hubris, perhaps it can be reforged. We'll see what we can do about that on the final floor. But until then, hello, shop. Um, I actually really do want a copy of Ollie Smooth Stone. Not badly enough to start selling relics. Like, it's okay. Neutralized Terror on the front line. Should be able to get the kill in... Way too many attacks, as it turns out. Before I shuffle the next deck, I could use the Elixir if I wanted to. I want my strikes back. Hang on. Now I'll play the Adrenaline. Higher chance of getting a strike back because I played both of them, leaving them in the discard pile to form the new draw pile. And yeah, now it turns out to have been wrong. Damn. See, if we had burned all of those days out, we would have had a better hand there for trying to stay perfect in this fight. Oh, well. Uh, three centuries for a random rare relic, sure. Uh, Mumpified Hand. Whenever you play a power card, a random card in your hand costs zero for the rest of the turn. Well, the Gremlin Horn, whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've got a lot of, um... Oh my gosh, I can just play Atom Bomb with Reverence. Sweet. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's gonna be, like, a, a potent finisher. Right there. I mean, it will apply poison to me. Do I care about that? Does that poison count as self-damage is the most important thing here, ultimately? Okay. Should be able to defend this turn. Extremely only just. But now... Damn. I was thinking, but now it's time to dunk. But no. Alright. Well, we're going to take some actual damage in this combat as well. And then... Set ourselves up for the kill next turn. Perfect. One down. Poison darts is not an attack. Grand Finale wouldn't be able to be played by the Reverence, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. I'll stick with what I've got. Runic Obelisk. Gain energy at the start of each turn. Lower your maximum hand size by four. Hmm. Now's I, upon pickup, obtain a random boss relic. This one could just immediately screw you is the thing. Uh, Kintsugi, remove five cards from your deck. Uh, choose two curses to obtain. Five fewer cards in this deck means that a lot of the time we're just going to be playing Atom Bomb on turn one. It's pretty good. Lower my maximum hand size by four is a problem with the adrenaline as well as the ring of the snake, in fact. All right, we'll take Kintsugi. I've half a mind basically just to remove all strikes and one defend. 
So, uh, the end of your turn, exhaust all cards in hand. Random card in your hand becomes unplayable for the turn. Permanently add a copy of this card to your deck. Gain five extra gold at the end of combat for each greed in your deck. That definitely goes in a thick deck. That's That seems the kind of thing that that goes in. And an infinite deck as well. All right, we probably just take Sickly and Parasite then. Okay, we've got one card removal opportunity super early and one late, and we've got four elites and nothing but question marks and shops. All right. That's looking hella good for us. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Atom bomb. Get some jars, long air. <laughs> We don't have much AoE in this deck, and I did want to make it a Shiv deck, but I'm starting to feel more conscious about that. Pick a black card. Lose 18 HP. What? Convert all your block into strength, then lose that strength at the end of your turn. Um, that could be used with Cloak and Dagger to make a pretty good turn. Uh, punishment, deal one damage for every hand, uh, every hand, for every, uh, card in your hand, draw, discard pile, no. This one doesn't even have a description of what it does. When it's drawn, it randomizes its costs. Its title is question marks, and it purges, which means it doesn't go to the exhaust pile, so you can't pull it back, so it probably has a really good effect. Pick up the weapon and see that you were not the first to use it. I need to know what it does. Uh, I'll take a strength potion here. Unfortunately, we can't just carry the rest and then sell them in the next space. Okay. Uh, we can now sell Kintsugi as well, by the way, because it's already taken its effect. And as a boss relic, it gives us a lot more money. Um, have in the time. Uh, let's get the sickly out of the deck as well. Bag of chips at the start of every... At the start of 10 combats, heal 4 HP. I don't understand what that's supposed to mean. Like, at the start of each 10th combat, heal 4 HP. Which makes it, like, the world's worst blood vial, and blood vial's also really not that good. Or is it, for the next 10 combats, heal 4 HP at the start? I just don't know. Uh, question card. I, th I suspect it's the latter, but I'm not certain, so I don't want to... Eh, you know what? Let's test it. Okay, yeah, no, it's got a charge of 10, so it, it is that. I'm gonna sell my elixir. That's about it, though. Thwack! Hell yeah! Oh, we got this! Oh, we're going to take him downtown. Add three shivs to your hand. Shuffle three random cantrips into your draw pile. Channel three random orbs. What the hell? So does it just have a random effect for every different Sneko value? Or does it just have a random effect and a random cost and occasion? Hmm. I don't know how it works. It's a skill as well. Three shivs to your hand, cantrips into your draw pile, and channel three orbs. Okay. My gosh. And then we'll play Reverence. <laughs> yeah, obviously we're fighting. Let's go. Hell yeah, Adam Bomb on the turn one. Uh, add three shivs to your hand. Oh, so for every extra cost it has... It has an extra effect, I think, is what's happening there. So that's just a blade dance for us right now. I have no attacks in hand right now, so I'm going to use the Reverence to play that Atom Bomb. Cool. So I'm going to take damage to the poison, but the frontliner is going to die before they ever get an action, and the backliner mm, definitely seems like they're probably going to die before they get an action. Alright. 
I've spoken too soon. Got him, though. Emerald. When you play six skills, add a random skill to your hand and gain two energy. Whenever you play six skills. Is that six skills in a single turn or is that six skills over the course of turns? Because Penid is every tenth attack you play deals double damage. Whereas things that occur over the course of a turn, I don't appear to have any at the moment. Um, they tend to use the wording whenever, but they also tend to say whenever you play six skills in a turn. So I don't know. We've definitely Terra for the back line. Sneko is three cantrips. Oh, sure. Yeah, I screwed that up. That's my bad. I should have known that was going to be too many cards to hold in hand. Prestidigitation draws us a spark, which draws us a prestidigitation, which draws us. Ah, nice. Catalyst. Not half bad. Quickly reverence that out, and then I can catalyst your poison. We got so close to the turn one kill there. Oh god, it did it as well. Oh, because of the necrotic poison also. Cool. Uh, one turn kill and elite. We get 308. Nice. Uh, golden egg, whenever you add a rare card to the deck, it's upgraded. Whenever you purchase a card from the merchant, it's upgraded. Ooh, sneak up intangibility on turn one. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, that's good for us. I don't know what, but I need to upgrade this. I don't know why, but it's essential that I upgrade that. I think it's going to have like Sneko 3 is going to be something like you instantly win this combat. Okay. Got to play Sneak Up. Ooh, don't want to play Storm of Steel. I could get a lot of attacks out here. I do want to play Storm of Steel, but I want to do this first. We play that. Then we'll play Reverence, burning the attack bomb. Okay. Sneko Purge. Exhaust up to five cards in your hand. Add five shifts to your hand. Add Shuffle five random cores into your draw pile. Refund one. Oh, that's so cool. That said, Storm of Steel is like the win though. And the win seems ultimately just a little bit cooler. Got more shivs this way. Lantern, gain uh, an additional energy at the start of each combat, or start each combat with an additional energy. I could take that backstab right now, but I don't think it's necessary. Sure. How? Raise your max HP by 10. Not half bad. Move the card from your deck. Get that other curse out of here. Uh, I'm really on edge, actually, about this. Sneko Purge Refund 1. What? So it just does have a different effect every time. Because we had a zero before, and it was Sneko Purge. Uh, add three shifts to your hand for zero energy. Well, now the zero energy is Sneko Purge Refund 1. The only difference is that I upgraded it in between. But the problem is, like, refunding one energy is not necessarily better. Yeah, I don't need the intangibility there. Oh, I played that too early. I forgot that the Nightmare steals your turn if you damage them too much too early. Forgot about that. That's my bad. Please stop putting reflexes in my deck. Reflexes and tacticians and all the uh, all the other things that I can't use. Played a hell of all the skills that turn, and the enemy's dead. Excellent. Paper Crane, enemies with weak deal 40% less damage rather than 25% less. Um, 
The Blade Dancers is starting to feel like the weakest aspect of this deck. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draft back into them. Bird Skull, your innate and refund, uh, your innate cards rather, have one refund and draw one card. That is really huge. Um, it means they have effectively no cost to you. And, oh no, but refund one. Yeah, they have effectively no cost to you a lot of the time. Uh, so I'm thinking we take After Image and Specialist. Specialist and After Image each when upgraded, and they will be upgraded because we have the Golden Egg become innate. And they'll be innate. They'll draw us extra cards from the Bird Skull. This seems really good. Bird Skull, After Image, Specialist. And then I also really want Metronome. So I guess I'm just going to sell some relics until I get that. No, I'm actually thinking about card removal again. Yeah. Oh, and obviously now backstab is always the correct choice because it just draws us a card. It's free damage. All right. So here's what I'm talking about. After image draws us a card as well as makes another card cost less. Specialist draws us a card as well as makes another card cost less. Hell yeah. Uh, channel five random orbs refund one add five shifts to your hand. Oh, okay. So this is just like drawing random effects. And it's drawing an amount of effects uh, equal to one plus the energy cost, I think, is what's happening here. And then when you upgrade it, it goes from giving you three random orbs, three random cores, three random shivs, th that kind of thing. Uh, it upgrades from that to five. I think that's ultimately what's happening here. I think we've solved the puzzle. Oh, look, it's Norotoxin. Do not breathe the deadly Norotoxin. Woo! Look at all that plasma. And then Atom Bomb for the kill, sure. Tin Flute. At the end of this run, choose one card in your deck. You can start the next run with that card in your deck. I'm probably going to sell this as a store. And the reason for that is because... Uh... Oh my gosh, but what if I put it on the question mark? The thing is, because I record these episodes a lot at a time, but if I'm not recording an episode immediately afterwards, I also play on the modded save file from time to time so that I can test out new mods. Uh... We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we do with it. Hey, birds. After image specialist, sneak up. Ooh. Yeah, it costs zero, and it has one effect, and that one effect is refund one. But I've also seen it as cost zero has one effect, and the one effect is put shivs in hand. So I'm assuming that's how that works. Um, I don't think that's a particularly wild assumption. I keep forgetting how large our hand size actually is, so that's that's what's happening here constantly, by the way, is I keep putting shivs into my into the wrong pile. Add in all that extra damage, and then make the poison necrotic, and it'll kill both of them before it gets to my turn. Obviously, we take the sneak up and upgrade it. It's just free intangibility on turn one. It's an innate card. So I'm intangible for one and two. After image. Specialist. Sneak up, sneak up. We'll also... Five random cores into your draw pile. We should probably do that earlier rather than later. Right, and throw the vulnerability on the target who needs it. Gremlin knob in the back line is dead. Perfect. Good cycles, good cycles. Deck is so thin that putting cores in this deck actually might not be a great idea. Cliff gives us another blade dance. Hell yeah. 
Gosh, we play so many attacks and so many skills. Uh, there's also another, this, uh, there's the emerald and then there's, I think also the sapphire or the ruby. I think it's ruby. Um, it would make sense to be ruby and then sapphire would probably be powers, but the ruby is play seven skills and you, seven attacks rather, and you get a random attack in your hand and two extra energy. And imagine having that as well as a shiv build, as well as emeralds. You just keep going off because you play so many attacks and so many skills. It'd be an unreliable kind of thing, but it'd be cool as hell. Lance. Okay, so it, it is whenever you play six. Um, cool. So it's not in a single turn. Nice. Good to know. Trying to play as many skills as I possibly can now so that I can just get more. That said, the skills that are put in my deck aren't always necessarily good. For a thin deck strategy, that could actually end up being a problem. Okay, 21 this turn. Never mind. Apparently 35. In Venom, Storm of Steel, Malaise? I do play a lot of shivs. And it comes pre-upgraded, although it doesn't appear that. So all of the other eggs in the game, that is to say the game, the eggs in the base game, the toxic, the molten, and the frozen eggs, uh, each make cards appear upgraded before you take them. The golden egg does not do that. Very small thing. All right, we just have to take the Eternal Feather for every five cards in your uh, deck. Heal three HP whenever you enter a rest site, because this is Honey Jar. Draw one more card every single turn. Retain extra, uh, retain one card every turn. Uh, on pickup, you gain a potion slot. Extra choice on card reward screens, but you cannot skip rewards, and this deck needs to be thin. Uh, discard two cards at the start of your turn, hovering kite, as well as gain an energy. No, we don't need the energy as much as we need the cards. So we'll take the Eternal Feather. I just want every single copy. Early shop, late shop. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Uh, I just want every single copy of Backstab that I can get. That's it. Be chill with that. I'm intangible for the first two turns. I've got a bunch of powers that just play themselves so easily. Like nothing should really be able to overcome us at this point. Right, bunch of nothing there. Do really want the extra card per turn. No, I have a shop later, I'll hold off. None of this is important enough to sell any of my relics for, especially a bunch of them. Uh, that said, I'll sell my potions happily. Because I'm not actually currently using those. Plus, that bag of chips is about to run out as well. I'm going to sell that. Okay. Whispering Voices. Uh, Rive is innate, but I can't play it. So, as a result, it's not going to benefit from Beard. Uh, uh, Bird Skull. It won't benefit from the old skill. Whoa, Runic uh, Icosahedron. Hell yeah, let's go. I love this thing. 13, gain three artifact. All right. 
This will give us a chance to actually lose, which is nice. <laughs> Shuffle three random calls into your draw pile, add five shifts to your hand. Uh, sorry, five random calls into your draw pile, add five shifts to your hand, channel five random orbs. Shuffle five random cantrips into your draw pile. God, imagine. Imagine this with quantum sh uh, quantum egg, though. Just... Could you imagine? A newborn deer lights up the... Trees and angel something something heaven? I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've listened to Ninja Sex Party. Um... Out of defense. I'm actually going to kill that mainliner so that I can play this atom bomb using reverence here. Cool. And have it kill a target for me super easily. Get him. We're intangible, so we can actually just keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Not interested in any of that. Uh, I'll take this space because I'm planning on warping over so that I can go up to the old nail area. Okay. I actually do have energy problems is the thing. My first turn goes off. But after that, I don't really have that much energy in this deck past that point. So, you know, it could be a problem. Um, exhaust up to five cards in your hand. That's... It's weird that it has add five shivs to hand as well as exhaust up to five cards in your hand. Because the latter, you obviously want a lot of cards in hand. The former, you don't want a lot of cards in hand. So I can see those being... Whoa, I actually did not intend to play that there. I was intending to right-click the runic icosahedron. And get myself a random potion. Right, and now we'll just kill him. Got him! Goodbye, old walker. Uh, turn up, you can know they'll become frail, as well as sneak up. I mean, there's no reason not to take it, is the thing. There's no reason not to take it for this build in particular, because Bird Skull is replacing the card as well as the energy cost. I need to make that clear. It is not uh, necessarily an instant take in normal combat. I mean, Calipers would probably keep its block. We get a fair amount of block on a normal turn, don't we? No, I'm keeping my money as well. Hey, Mimic! All right, hello. Uh, I'm totally fine to be off guard, by the way, because I... You'll see. You'll see. Lose one focus, unfortunately, on the specialist, by the way. So I should probably play the Sneko first. Mm -hmm. Sneak up, sneak up, sneak up. Eh, just intangibility for the first three turns of combat. NBD. Oh, right. I can't play any attacks. Whoops. A random card from your discard pile. Draw one card. Sure. I don't know why I'm playing so many cards. Definitely don't need to. Add three void to your draw pile. Uh, that's unfortunate. Choose a card to fire, and of course it doesn't even have the ability to there. Yeah, three void in the draw pile is pretty rough. So, uh, use reverence to get that card out. All right. We had a surprisingly good turn despite that. That said, it is difficult to deal damage to us at this point, so. By design, mind. Turn a random card from the draw. Uh, if 
fine. Just play all of those to get them out. And then the enemy does die this turn. Awesome. Vampiric Spirits. On the first turn of combat, 25% of all unblocked damage is, uh, you deal is returned to you as HP. Yeah, we win. Gain one intangible and exhaust three cards, three random cards in your hand. Smoke Bomb. That's interesting. Black one. How much exhaust synergies does Silent really have? Not much, otherwise it'd be wild with shivs is the thing. So so it's got the benefit with the exhaust three random cards in your hand. I guess if your deck is bad, smoke bomb's good. I guess you also play it at the end of your turn, right? And then it just exhausts the detritus. It could actually be good two times over in tangibility as well as exhaust the worst cards that you have. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Interesting card. Oh god. Add five shifts to your hand, five random cantrips to your draw pile, exhaust up to five cards in hand, and then shuffle five random cores into your draw pile. Cool. That's gonna be wild as hell. And it costs zero. Hey, heal to full. Thank you, Runic Icosahedron. Yeah, that's gonna be... That's... That's gonna be the win here. All right, is this gonna start the chain? No. There we go, the chain starts. Hey, all the cores go past, they get all the cantrips, and then they turn around and murder the Darkling for me. Hell yeah. Like, extremely no need for any of those. We might be able to use them, but that doesn't mean we need them. Five random orbs, I did that in the wrong order then. Again, not that it makes a difference, but it's still good to keep the correct order in mind so that you can then more readily and more easily conform to it at other times. Sure, increase their cost. Let's see if I care. Damn, Frontliner got hit with that exact worst scenario. Play another skill to get a free skill in hand. Okay, now I can throw this fire potion to continue this chain. So I got in the back line and swing and a miss on the finish there. Oh well. We'll get you yet, Spirit Guardian. Just trying to get closer to the next pen nib. I'm only starting to worry about that now because I'm starting to worry about how I'm going to kill the Time Lord. Specialist after image. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Throwing in Venom in for good measure. Shuffle five random cantrips into your pile. Yeah, we'll do that right now. Apply that, then we right click reverence, shoot the atom bomb. Yeah, I really wanted to play the runic icosahedron as well. Upon pick up choosing exhaust card, when we play that card, it no longer exhausts. Um I 
Whenever you play that card, it no longer exhausts. Play an attack card from your hand at no cost and exhaust it. I'm going to try this. I want to see if the hollow soul, uh, the bottled soul and the reverence work well together. So we'll lose 100 gold and two upgraded cards in order to upgrade the old nail. Uh, the upgraded cards are going to be the defend and neutralize. I'd already kind of set them up. And the old nail now is attack steal double damage. This can only, that is to say, the old nail forge, the nail smith, can only appear on the final floor and is always pretty close to the boss. So it's usually only enhancing your damage for the boss combat effectively. Um, here's our last opportunity to sell. Kind of fine with what we've got though. Just remove a defend. And I'll take vulnerability. Seems useful. Toka's another removal, or I could brew. Brew two random potions doesn't seem that bad. Reflective coating, as well as another power potion. Hmm, I think I'll take that actually. Reflective coating is three blur and three reflection. Don't want to trigger that early. It's going to be very effective when I do play it. Gain five frail. Ooh, at least we're immune to that. Thank you for trying to screw us, Runic Icosahedron. So I'm five random orbs. I should do that before I play specialist. Seems like energy's probably not going to be our problem. Terror out the... Maybe in Venom as well. All right, all right, all right. Um, basically, I just need to play as many attacks as I can to try and set up for a pen nib eventually. So I can play four more cards this turn. That should be Blade Dance, Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. Three turns of intangibility here. Blade Dance, Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. Adrenaline, looking for another Blade Dance, got it. Blade Dance, Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. And now we've got the Pen Nib dealing double damage. We've got Pure Nail dealing double damage. And we've got the enemy vulnerable for a total of 468 damage on this Atom Bomb. Let's just drop it. Hell yeah. That was a cool build for the moment. My name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game. It's been Slay the Spire Modded. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we will see you. Ooh, actually I should make this decision right now. I'm gonna get that upgraded Sneko Purge card because that just seems like it's gonna go pretty wild. And I'm gonna try and make sure that that's in the next video as well. So hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.